<laughs> a lot of comedians, there are a lot of comedians who will use a sound effect to, to get the audience's attention to lock them in. Especially when there's like one table talking to make a noise, make them look over so they can miss something. All right, your last comedian, here we go, let's get that out of here. Your, la next, your last comedian is also a bright rising star somewhere. And uh, yes, in the galaxy by the tail of his stage. Please give a warm welcome to the best Mahia you ever find, Joey Mahia. Yeah, my dad uh, had multiple families, so there's other Mahias out there. I think I'm related. How y'all doing? Low energy is fantastic. All right, that was pretty high. Uh, I am Joey Mejia, which uh, children growing up reminded me rhymes with Joey Aquia. I grew up in Maine, so Joey Aquia was an easy go-to. My brother tried Josephine, which uh, you rarely run into a Josephine. That's not even a, you know common. Anyway, no, no more rambly. I'm aware that I have a bad case. Some people have a bad case of RBF, resting bitch face. I have RSF, resting suicide face. It's, it's not, not received very well in Seattle. I'm aware. I'm aware, wolf. Are there any gullible wolves out there? Or are there only a werewolf? Seems, seems like they're pretty on it. Um, I'm a big fan of communication. Communication is super important to me. That's why uh, when people forget that first R in the word library, I think they're just really suggesting certain men of the world to be dishonest. The berries of the world are just hearing library. Lie. I think that's what fucked up Barry Bonds. You gotta be careful, like Leah mentioned, what you're putting in people's brains. So. Do as I say, not as I do. Crypto callback. Uh, I lost 17,000 to two cute dogs. Fuck Doge and Shiba Inu. That's just a, a stupid. Don't don't trust my investment advice. Um, mushrooms came up earlier. I did make uh, a mushroom hot chocolate for myself. A um, couple months back, I'm sober right now. That's not a joke. I just want the adoration. Um, being sober. Yeah. Um, but I was in front of my girl at the time, um, and I was making the psilocybin hot chocolate, and I thought it was funny because the package has the first ingredient, the psilocybin, so I passed it to her. And I put in nine squares, and it's three squares for an intense, intentional experience. So nine was a bit much. I had to lie to her, of course, and say I only put in three. I messed up the order of that. That's just stupid. Um, what else? Cosby came up earlier. Um, he has a great song on Spotify. I, I enjoy a Bill Cosby song, The Old Man in the Train. It's weird. It's, I'm kind of torn. It's kind of like that Michael Jackson thing. Like separate the art and the artist maybe a little. I feel bad for liking that song. Martin Luther King came up earlier. Great man, obviously. Legendary man. Legendary. One skinny eye away from being a rich milk. That's why he's legendary. Um, what? <laughs> also, Martin Luther King did set the bar a little too high for dreams. Like, I had a dream that I was a chameleon and it was really cool. I felt like Snake and Metal Gear Solid. A lot of reptiles in this joke. Uh, but I can't say it. I can't say I had a dream. Like, people expect civil conversation once you start a sentence, I had a dream. Um, but yeah, an alligator started chasing me. And that dream became very stressful. I did have another dream. This is just like a lesson dream when I was like nine years old. My dog Max died, and so in the dream, Max was alive, and I had to pet him in some weird pet cemetery type scenario to keep him alive. And I was like, at some point, I'm like, Max, I gotta go to school. I hate school, but I gotta live my life. So that's just a fun lesson I learned as a child. 
Uh, I did grow up in Maine. I was essentially the New England Fresh Prince, as my mother <laughs> saw. Uh, here, you know, Capitol Hill, you got the crosswalks, the rainbow crosswalks. In Philly, the rainbow sidewalks were because of the crack vials. They were all just different colored crack vials all over the street. My mom's like, yeah, let's move you up to Maine where there's less obvious crack vials. The snow covers the crack vials in Maine. Uh, call that to the Oleato drink, the olive oil. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, I asked them, what does that mean? They said, oh, it's olive oil. I'm like, okay, what's that do? And they're like, it helps with your digestion. And I'm like, oh, it helps you shit better. And they're like, no, corporate won't let us say it like that. It helps with your digestion, sir. Oleato, shout out. Starbucks pays me for that one. That's marketing. Gotta input the, uh, you know, companies and give them five, get them pay $5. I'm just losing it now. Hobby Lobby, I walked into Hobby Lobby recently looking for a basketball because I thought that would be there. It's Hobby Lobby. There's dining room sets. There's no basketballs. I asked where the basketball is. I was like, you gotta go to a different store, man. So I felt dumb. That's just a segue for basketball. We have basketball fans here. Couple, couple basketball fans. Uh, I was assaulted uh, at LA Fitness. LA Fitness is great for pickup basketball if you want to be low key sexually assaulted uh, in a pickup game. Because I can't prove that you know he wasn't going for my balls. He was going for the ball. Like he just tapped me right on the button. And there's nothing I can do about that. And also, like, people are pretty good at basketball, so when I'm, I'm in the post, I'm not jumping, but I'm, like, there. When I change somebody's shot that's good at basketball, they're like, you're doing too much. You gotta, you gotta stop, man. So the, the guy scores over me and pats me on the side as if I'm a petite woman as we walk down the court. And I know I have childbearing hips, but you yeah. broke the touch barrier there, so... Yeah. Uh, back on the dogs, I saw a lost dog for a thousand dollars sign, reward one thousand dollars, and I was like, I can find a similar looking dog for like six hundred bucks. That seems like a pretty easy profit. Uh, I was tricked into eating dog. Anyone else here? Nope. Accidentally nope. been tricked into eating dog. Oh, was a, <laughs> probably not sure. Was a, oh, you knew. Okay. You're a bad person then. <laughs> I was in Vietnam. Fuck, yeah. They were like, I was just with friends, and they were like, oh, Joe, you gotta try it. This is the good me. And then there was like a forever, never ending sorrow chew that I had to do. Um, but I feel like dogs know, like, no matter how good, <laughs> like, you're, you know, friendly with a dog, they still kind of know. Uh, I was a dog dad. I lost a dog in a relationship. You can do that. You can't do that with kids. But when you leave a relationship, they can just take the dog and go. There's no legal ramifications. Um, but I was like the best dog dad. I didn't take him for walks or anything. I just put on Red Dead Redemption. Uh, you know, loved when I was gutting the deer, loved the animals, the squirrels, all that stuff. But occasionally, Arthur in Red Dead Redemption would have the popo after him, and the popo had some dogs, and I shot the dogs in front of my dog, and it was weird. I stopped doing it, so we can be less comfortable. Uh, what else? Oh, I recently, we were talking about losing weight, um, or L talked about losing weight a little bit. I purposely gained 64 pounds uh, to honor Chris Farley. And then I, I got up to 252 pounds, usually walking around 188 at my healthiest. 252, and then I'm like, I should probably Google. And then I look it up, and he's like 240 in high school, so I could have stopped earlier. Um, but he was 400 at his biggest, so trying to be like my heroes. We'll see where I take this. My dad was 600 pounds at 5 foot 8, but I don't respect him because he left, so. <laughs> Uh, what else? I, uh, on the dog stuff, there was a, uh, 
Guinness World Record for the oldest dog recently, 31 years old. The por Portuguese pup lived to be 31 years old. The trick was they were feeding him human food, AKA food. <laughs> Whatever we've been feeding dogs is not helping him live long. That's, that's all that proves. Um, that's probably, oh, a stranger, I was walking to therapy, hot, yeah, I go to therapy, is this real, I don't know, I was walking to my therapist's office, and a stranger offered me a slice of pizza, and I said no, I think it's because I'm sober now, I just, if I was high, I probably would have accepted that, um, but that, I'm, I'm losing the weight is all I'm trying to say, so don't be worried, okay? Uh, people get weird when you say you gain 60 plus pounds on purpose, so. Um, one last thing, I did date an astrologist uh, one time, got me addicted to squirters, maybe I shouldn't include that part. Um, but I was like open to new types of people, you know, like I, I, people are very judgmental with astrology a lot of times, so she's a very kind person. Um, so she did out my whole chart, like mapped out my whole life, but I was too high to pay attention, and then we broke up, so I'll never know. I'll never know. Um, what else? That's probably enough. I've been up here a decent amount of time. I got Kobe or Boozer. Couple more jokes, or are we good? We're good. Right? Okay. Oh, oh. You I'll do a couple, okay. Since I was supposed to, the Hobby Lobby thing kind of sucks as a joke alone, so that's supposed to just lead into uh, car conspiracy theory with Carlos Boozer. Anyone know Carlos Boozer? About 15 years ago, talented NBA player. I believe he was just a very high level college basketball player, but couldn't quite make it to the NBA. But he was super fun to be around. And they're like, Carlos, you're really fun, but you're a fun guy. You're not cordyceps, not a mushroom. But what we need from you is to stop the drinking. Like, that's getting out of hand. Partying's cool, but too much drinking. So just sign this NDA, change your last name to Boozer, and wear the shame on the back of your shoulders for the entirety of your career. And then we'll let you have that NBA contract. That joke means a punchline, just like this one. I'm mad at Kobe Bryant, 2023. I'm mad at Kobe Bryant. These are valid feelings, according to my therapist. I've been told my feelings are valid. But I'm not mad at the real below ground Kobe Bryant. That would be terrible. I'm a huge Shaq fan, but I'm not holding on to that rivalry. I'm mad at a digital Kobe Bryant that exists in my NBA 2K video game. I'm an adult boy simulating 90s basketball alternate realities. I had Manute Bull backing up Shaquille O'Neal. I had Penny Hardaway, Dwayne Wade, and Kobe. And Kobe left us in Orlando for a currency worse than crypto. It was just NBA 2K fake dollars. So, and also in that game, I suck at free throws. IRL, I'm good. I'm about 80% plus from the line. So fuck you, dad. You can learn something from video games. I can Tim Duncan free throw. You just pizza your feet for those. Like you're skiing. And anyway, back to Kobe. Kobe clanks a couple in the game. And there's a fake child in the audience yelling, he missed them both? Like, really, Kobe? So that's for, that, with the ad in a video game, Kobe's getting shit forever, and that shouldn't be a thing. All right, that's enough time. I love y'all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? All right. Uh, thank you all for supporting Live Comedy here at the I Corps Cafe.